Hello biology students and welcome to video two in the digestion unit. So in the last video we ended up at the stomach. We had gotten all the way through the mouth, through the esophagus, and to the stomach. So now we're going to pick up from there and start with the small intestine. So remember in the stomach, um, the food at that point had been liquefied into a liquid called chyme. Um, so what's going to happen is peristals peristalsis, that rhythmic um, compression of digestive of your digestive tract is going to continue, and that's going to force the chyme into the small intestine. So now we're in the next organ. Um, and remember, at the top of the stomach, there was a little um, valve that opened and closed between the esophagus, esophagus and the stomach called the esophagus the cardiac sphincter. Well, at the bottom of the stomach, there's also a little ring of muscle that opens and closes called the pyloric sphincter. And basically, this controls the amount of chyme that enters the small intestine at a time. So it only lets a little bit out at a time, so that way the small intestine only gets a little bit at a time and it can, it can be more easily digested. So the pyloric sphincter opened and closes, letting out a little bit at a time, and therefore takes about two to six hours to empty. And once the chyme reaches the small intestine, this is where most of the digestion and absorption occurs. So that's a big key here. Most digestion actually occurs in your small intestine, and most nutrient absorption occurs in your small intestine. So the way this works, your small intestine has three parts, and they're all super fun to say. So the first section of the small intestine is called the duodenum. The second section is called the jejunum, and the third is called the ileum. Um, so the first section is the duodenum, and that's kind of the one we're going to focus on. And it's, it's, the, it's just the first 25 centimeters, so it's a really small section. And it's basically where all the digestive juices, all those digestive enzymes that are going to come and digest our food, enter from other organs. Um, so most, most specifically, we're talking about bile, which comes from your liver and your gallbladder, and pancreatic juices, which can contain enzymes from your pancreas that's going to help them break down the food. Because remember, at this point, we've only broken down a little bit of starch in the mouth and a little bit of proteins in the stomach, so there's a lot more digestion still left to do. Okay, so here's a picture. So you can see here was my stomach. The food came in via the esophagus. Um, it was digested a little bit in the stomach, mostly just proteins. And then I have my little valve here, the pyloric sphincter, is going to let a little bit of food into the small intestine at a time. And this first section is called the duodenum. Um, I'm going to get bile come, coming from the liver and the gallbladder. is going to be dumped into the small intestine. And also pancreatic juice and enzymes coming from the pancreas into the duodenum of the small intestine. So let's talk about the liver first. So we, we've, we've mentioned the liver a couple times this year. We already know it's used to store, to store glycogen. Um, and we know it also breaks down toxic substances in the blood. But some other functions we haven't talked about is it's also at the site of a lot of protein synthesis. And importantly for this unit, it produces bile, which is basically a substance that breaks down fat. We say it emulsifies fat, which basically is a big fancy biology word that means it breaks big globs of fat into smaller globs. So you can kind of think of it like soap. It's what we have that's going to help us digest lipids. So bile is produced in the liver. However, usually the bile doesn't go directly to the small intestine. It only goes there where when it's needed. So in the meantime, when after that bile is made, but before it's needed, it's, store, it's stored in what you, what's called the gallbladder. Um, so remember when we looked at, at the anatomical model um, of the human body, we saw the gallbladder was right in that little green thing that was on the back of the liver. So it's, uh, bile is made in the liver, but then is stored in the gallbladder um, where it's stored and concentrated into bile. And then only when it's needed is the bile released through a common bile duct into the small intestine. So then the other thing that dumps enzymes into the small intestine that we saw is the pancreas. So remember that this is also located right behind the stomach, and it produces what we call pancreatic juice, which is a nice lovely phrase for you there. Um, and it, that pancreatic juice contains a lot of things. It has sodium bicarbonate, and this is, wicked, this is very, very important. Sodium bicarbonate is a base, so when it's added to the small intestine, it's going to neutralize all that stomach acid that came with the chyme. So this helps to protect your um, small intestine from being damaged from that high um, acidic chyme. So, th so that's a base, and then it also contains lots of digestive enzymes, because remember, most digestion is going to happen in the small intestine. So some of the, the digestive enzymes that exist, the first one's pancreatic amylase, and just like salivary amylase in your mouth, it's going to break down starch into disaccharides. So anywhere you see one of these boxes that was supposed to be an arrow, so starch turning into disaccharides, but my program didn't like it and didn't convert it right. Um, 
And some other enzymes in pancreatic juice are enzymes like maltase, sucrase, and lactase. Remember, anything ASE is an enzyme. And all of those are going to break down what it sounds like they break down. They break down maltose, sucrose, and lactose into monosaccharides. So in other words, we're taking disaccharides and breaking them down into monosaccharides. Um, lipase, just like it sounds like, it's going to break down um, lipids into monomers. So we're going to break down fats into fatty acid and into glycerol. Trypsin and chemotrypsin are a little harder to figure out. They're proteases, so they're going to break down proteins into amino acids. And then finally, nuclease is going to break down our nucleotides, DNA and RNA, sorry, our nucleic acids, my mistake, into nucleotides. So in all cases, we're taking our um, polymers and breaking them down into monomers. Okay, so that was digestion. Most digestion occurs in the small intestine. Also, most absorption, so it abs absorbs in the small intestine. It's all well and good that we break down food, but if we just break it down and then don't absorb it, it's, it's a lot of wasted energy. So if we're gonna break down the food, we have to actually absorb it into our body to be used. So absorption also uh, occurs in the small intestine. And by definition, what this is, is we have all these nutrients that are hanging out in our alimentary canal in the tube inside our body, but they actually have to be um, absorbed into the circulatory system. So they're absorbed from the, the digestive tract into the blood vessels and lymph vessels, which are basically like the um, circulatory vessels that exist and can bring them throughout the entire body. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a picture in a second, but basically the small intestine is designed to absolutely maximize surface area. So there's lots of surface area to absorb these nutrients into the circulatory system. So to do that, basically the surface of the small intestine has these little finger-like projections called villi, and on those villi there are even more projections called microvilli. So this makes the surface area of your small intestine about 300 meters square. Basically, you have the same surface area as a tennis court inside your small intestine because, because of all these little projections. And I'll show you a picture in a minute. Okay. So basically, what's going to happen is peristalsis, so that rhythmic contractions of your smooth muscle in your small intestine, is going to move the chyme along the surface of your small intestine, and the nutrients are going to pass through the cells in your small intestine and enter the circulatory vessels. Um, so specifically, all fats are going to go into your lymphatic system, and then everything else goes into the blood. And then the blood is the blood goes right to the liver, and then liver stores any nutrients that it needs to. Remember, it, we said it can store glucose as glycogen, and then it converts them to other things if need be. So it, it kind of goes from the, the small intestine into the blood system, and then right to the liver for processing and storage. Okay, so here's the picture I was talking about. So you can see here's the inside of the small intestine, and you can see if I zoom into those cells, they are these little crazy little finger-like projections on the surface of those cells. And if I zoom into just one of these things, there's even more little projections on the surface of those projections. So, you, so the, 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 the little, the first projections are called villi, and the projections on the projections are called microvilli. So basically, I'm largely increasing the surface area by putting all these little bumps on it, more or less. Okay, so here's a, another picture. Um, so you can see here, um, so this would be the inside of the small intestine. You can see the nutrients are absorbed through these cells on, these, on the surface, and then they're dumped right into the circulatory system, which is the red and the blue. And this yellow here, that's the lymphatic system. So the fats are going to go into those yellow vessels, and everything else goes into those blue and red vessels and are brought to the liver. So that's the small intestine. The last step we have is the large intestine. Um, so we know once all the digestion is complete and absorption is complete, peristalsis is going to move the remaining contents into the colon or the large intestine. Um, and this has, also has various sections. We're not going to break it down like we did in the small intestine. But basically the main function of the large intestine is to absorb any leftover nutrients in water. I'm going to circle it, because that's the big important, that's the main function. The large intestine absorbs any remaining nutrients, but most importantly, it absorbs water. Okay? And what's left, and, um, that's not absorbed, is called feces. And that leaves the body by going through the rectum and through the anus. Okay, so you can see here is the large intestine. You can see I, I have my, here's my small intestine, and it dumps right into the large intestine where any remaining nutrients, and most importantly, water, is going to be absorbed. Um, because we don't want to get rid of water. Water is too important to the body. Okay. 
the Warden Chest is actually pretty cool. Um, in your Warden Chest, there's a lot of bacteria, um, and some of that bacteria is E. coli. And you might think, ah, E. coli is terrible. I don't want E. coli in um, inside of me. But it turns out that these bacteria actually live in symbiosis with us. Um, they help us, and we help them. We help them by giving them lots of food to eat, and they help us by breaking down food that we can't break down. So a lot of the food that you eat that your body can't digest, these bacteria digest for you, and then we just take the nutrients from them. So these bacteria are not harmful, they're non-pathogenic, and they, they, by living there, they're preventing any harmful bacteria from living there. And by breaking down our food, they're giving us a lot of vitamins and nutrients that we wouldn't get otherwise. Then finally, the last piece of the digestive system I want to talk about, um, as you can see right here, right at the end of the small large intestine, there's this little thing hanging off there. That's your appendix. So for us, it's it's a vestigial structure in our bodies. So we don't use it. Um, it's evolution is um, selecting against it in humans. Um, but for other mammals, it's used to store cellulose and other nutrients that are digested in other animals. We don't digest cellulose. We don't eat a lot of grass. Um, so we don't use it, but it definitely is used in other organisms.